All right, now we're going to kind of move out of trauma and we're going to move into bleeding, starting with epistaxis. Okay, epistaxis overview here. So this is just showing you, um, you know, the difference with anterior and posterior bleeding and where this typically comes from. So anterior bleeding, the most common location here is Kesselbeck's plexus. Um, and then for posterior, bleeding tends to come from the sphenopalatine uh, artery. And that can be more serious, and we're going to talk about that. Here's a good reference slide from the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery with some epistaxis guidelines that you may want to refer to during the exam. So basic treatment here. So you're going to have patients gently blow out the clots. You can use a vasoconstricting spray. Um, you can use nose clips or direct compression for 10 to 15 minutes, no peaking. Um, if they're still bleeding, you can try a TXA-soaked uh, plaget. And again, you just would put it in and then hold pressure again 15 minutes. Um, if you can see a source, you can cauterize it for sure. Um, and if bleeding still continues, these patients may need to get packed and then they can be discharged to follow up with ENT or to come back to the ED for packing removal. Here's some anterior epistaxis materials that are helpful to have on hand. Uh, right now, tranexamic acid is really in vogue for this. It typically comes as 500 milligrams and 5 cc's of NS, and you can soak a plaget with that. You can put it on another bleeding control device, such as a balloon occluder. Um, there's hemostatic sealants. We don't really use those so much in the ED. And then good old-fashioned nasal packing, whether it be made of gel foam or some cellulose-containing packing or one of the inflatable balloon tamponade devices. So posterior epistaxis, this can go south very quickly. So you want to make sure to uh, get control of hemorrhage. And this can be done. Um, there are special devices for posterior packing that you can use. Um, you can also use a Foley catheter. These pictures are showing you some examples of how that can be done. But these patients can have excessive bleeding, which can lead to vagal stimulation. Um, you know, you got to be careful with packing. But the point being, these patients should never be sent home, right? So if you have patients with extensive bleeding, you know, this can happen in older patients, just admit them for observation and get ENT involved early.